Hey, welcome back everybody to another video and today I wanted to take a look at a very cool application that lets you emulate all sorts of different games and this one is called RetroArch and if you're familiar with this it's basically a all-in-one emulator and you can have all these different cores like Super Nintendo, Sega Genesis, Game Boy, Game Boy Color and all sorts of different emulators to play your different ROMs and this is a really cool application or emulation for the PS Vita and it's one of the best and for the PSP unfortunately it's not that great and I'm just gonna let you guys know right off the bat that some of the games are not gonna play very well using this emulation and so it is a little bit different but I really wanted to share with you this application just in case some of you have certain games that are not working for other emulations and you can try this one out and I didn't really do a lot of testing like a lot of testing with different games I just basically used some of the stuff I already had on my memory card and I just went with that so uh, it's a really cool application I love the interface I love the idea but some of the cores the emulation there is just not working so here is the main menu and you're basically loading a core to run a game or a ROM. So let's go into our core, our load our core, and you load up the core, the emulation or the emulator, and then you select your game, but it has to match. So for example, you have to have the Game Boy, Game Boy Color ROM in order for it to work on this core or this emulator. And there's not a whole lot of emulation going on here, it's just your very basic and old school consoles for the most part. Uh, we do have NES and Super Nintendo, uh, Game Boy Advance and Game Boy Color. So the two that I did try was the Game Boy Advance and the Super Nintendo and they weren't that great. So, so just keep in mind that this emulation here is not going to be the greatest but it's a lot of fun to have on your system just in case you're looking to emulate a certain game that's not working for another emulator like I was talking about before and you could just mess around and have some fun with this and it doesn't hurt to have it on here let's go ahead and get started on how to install RetroArch for the PSP alright so here we are on our desktop and we're gonna connect our PSP through USB connection there we go here is our PSP USB drive USB drive D now we have that ready go to the first link in the description and that'll take you to retroarch.com and go and hit the download link and you want to go down to PSP hit download and it should start downloading right away we're gonna go into show in our folder here we go and you want to right click and extract the files and if you don't have an extracting program I do have 7-zip available for you in the description down below open RetroArch up and you should see six different items, two folders, one eboot.pbp, icon, pick one, and kernel functions. So we are good to go. Now we're going to open up our USB drive, the PSP USB drive. Let's go into our PSP folder, go into game, and if you're using categories plugin, make sure to you know throw it into the correct folder and if you don't have that you can just drag that into your game and copy it onto here and for our emulators I'm gonna throw this in here so the size here is 137 megabytes so it is gonna take a little bit of time to copy all the files and once it's done we're gonna go back on our PSP and check it out alright let's head on over to our PSP there we go and hit our emulators folder and there is RetroArch love that wallpaper and if you want to support these guys they do have a merch going on on their website and I'll have that link in the description down below you can buy like pillows t-shirts coffee mugs and things like that and support them as they do a great job on providing us a very amazing service with this awesome application so I wanted to take a look at the app and all the different uh, options we have with this uh, emulator I'm just gonna call it emulator because that's what it does <laughs> here's the main menu and we have this standard green and black 
going on for our theme and we can change that and I'll go into that here first so let's go into settings so let's go down to user interface let's go to appearance and let's go down and we want to change the menu color theme so we have classic green classic blue classic violet classic gray legacy red dark purple midnight blue golden electric blue apple green volcanic red lagoon bro grammar dracula fairy floss flat ui grubbox dark grubbox light hacking the kernel nord nova one dark palin pale night sorry solarize dark solarize light tango tark tark dark tango light zenburn anti zenburn flux and going back to the classics and it's a lot of great options here love all the colors and i'm just gonna pick uh dracula i really like that different colors that are going on and we can also do a shadow effect which is great let's turn that on as you can see it gives it more of a pop on all the text very nice and this is one of the best parts about this application guys is the background animation i think this is one of the best settings in this retroarch application let's turn that on and we have a animation of snow light Next we have snow heavy, we have rain, we have a vortex, a star field, my favorite, and let's go to star field. And right below it we have the background animation speed and it's at 1.0. If we amp that up, it's going to go pretty fast, 3.6. Let's go the highest. What is the highest? So it, it looks like you're really flying in through space here, which is fun. All right, what's the highest, guys? It's 10? Oh, yeah, you're really flying through. And you can go really slow or whatever. I think 2 is, is decent. It doesn't get too crazy. 1.5 is good. Let's hit Vortex. Vortex will look a lot cooler if it was a lot faster, maybe. No, it just looks too glitchy. Let's try rain. Oh, the rain is great. It looks really smooth. Kind of throws you off the whole little bit. You want it somewhat. Yeah, that, that's good. Makes it look really nice. The snow is great too. I mean, all these different settings are just awesome. Uh, yeah. So you have your top thumbnail, box arts, off or screenshots, title screens. So there's all sorts of different settings you can mess around here with your appearance. And it's just a lot of fun. I love when they give us those options to customize it to our own liking. And it makes the application just far better than most. So yeah, we have all the different settings like drivers, audio, video, input, latency, configuration to work with whatever you're working with. You have your information, scan content. I would back off on scanning content because it takes a long time. If you have a lot of different games, it's just going to take forever. And I tried it and it took hours and it didn't even finish and it crashed. So what you want to do is just load a core. So let's load a core here. And let's go to the Game Boy Advance. Let's try the GPSP core here. Let's open that up. And I press circle to run this core. And what it does, it's just going to almost reset itself, restart it. It's kind of weird how it works. So let's just wait for it here. There's my memory card flashing. There we go. And let's load a content. And content is going to be your games. And we have our different folders. We have favorites, music, downloads, playlist, MSO, 
EFO and host. So your memory card is going to be the MSO folder. We can go into our PSP, go into game, and I do have some games on this RetroArch folder here under ROMs. So let me go back. So the parent directory, this is the folders on my memory stick. So let's go into PSP, game. Uh, here are my different folders, emulators. Let's go into RetroArch. And I did create a separate folder called ROMs in the RetroArch folder on PC. And I copied all my games on here in different folders like GBA, Sega Genesis, SNES. Let's hit GBA and let's do let's do Final Fantasy Tactics and next it's gonna ask you to choose a core and the suggested core is gonna be here or I guess the current core loaded the one that we just loaded is the GPSP and then we have these other two options let's just run the current core so that didn't work I'm not sure why but let's load the content again go back into our game and you don't really necessarily have to load the, the core you can just go and find the game that you want to load up let's load up GBA let's do Yu-Gi-Oh and let's try this again might work it might not it's a little tricky sometimes so yeah, it's just not really wanting to work on me here. But it's good to show you guys. That way you have an idea of what's going on with this. And let's try another one. Let's go to... Let's go to Sega Genesis. Let's run Sonic. So we're going to open up Sonic here. And I believe I'm, I have the GPSP running core. Shouldn't really work like that. <laughs> so there it is running. It's kind of strange because it didn't really ask me for a core to choose. And the audio is pretty bad. I believe it's because I'm running off Remote Joy Lite. Yeah, Remote Joy Lite is going to take a lot of performance out of my gameplays, unfortunately. So it's not a really good example of how it should run. But the one thing I really don't like about this RetroArch too is that, let me pause this here real quick. Now one of the main things I really dislike about RetroArch for the PSP is that I can't access the main menu again. I can't go back and choose another game. I have to hit the home button, quit the application, go back and restart it and it does take a long time to load RetroArch for me. And I'm running this off my PSP 3000 and it's updated to 6.61 uh, Pro C2 with Infinity 2.0 and as you can see we're still sitting on the please wait window and that's one of the main things why I don't really like using it but I thought it was just kind of fun to show you guys this app for your PSP and just to have it on there just in case and to have some fun with it whatever so yeah so that is it for this one guys thank you so much for watching I really do appreciate it any questions comment down below and I'll try to get back to you as soon as possible. If you enjoyed it, please give it a thumbs up. And if you haven't already subscribed to the channel, please subscribe and hit that notification bell so you don't miss a video in the future. Thank you so much for watching. Take care and I'll see you on the next one.